Berik Ali Bai is a famous Kazakh jeweler, honored art worker of Kazakhstan, holder of the Order of Karl Fabergé. The talented craftsman has been fascinated with jewelry making since young age. He has made it his life's mission to preserve the centuries old Kazakh jewelry making traditions and pass them to the next generation of artisans. Today I paid him a visit in his art museum where he collects valuable art pieces dating back to the 18th and 19th centuries. Speaking of the history of the Kazakh arts, what are the values that embody the Kazakh national heritage? Kazakhs put a sacred meaning in many of their household and daily used items. But personally, I would call the Sokele, a bridal headdress, the real treasure in the Kazakh culture. The Kazakhs valued the Sokele greatly. Alke Magulan and many other historians wrote that an elaborate headdress in the past was worth as much as 500 horses. Knesari Khan's brother, Sajan Touré, estimated the Sokele of Bicycle Bai's daughter, a native of the junior horde who lived in the first half of the 19th century, at 500 horses. From the records of the poet and ethnographer, Mashua Yusip Kopeyuli. Before marrying a daughter, a family prepared a rich dowry. The best jewelers and blacksmiths were invited in advance. When came to Sokele, the fathers were generous and paid off the jewelers and seamstresses with hundreds of horses. Our ancestors demonstrated their wealth by marrying a daughter. It was a whole village parting with the young women when they married. So the brides were given garments decorated from head to toe. Each jewelry had its own purpose and put a special meaning in the details. The very word Sokele has many meanings. Sao is healthy, whole, kel means coming back or homecoming. People wanted to see the bride in good health after the marriage and hoped she could visit them often after she moved away to live with her husband. The headdress of the bride also had a sacred meaning. It protected her from the otherworldly evil forces. After the first visit to the groom, the bride's parents begin to prepare a dowry consisting of numerous carpets, robes and fur coats. They order a sokele to jewelers, Iberai Altansarin, writer, educator, scientist. One of the features of sokele is its height. Similar headdresses were found during archaeological excavations of the Saka period. Remember the headpiece of a golden man? We can compare it to sokele. I think it embodied the high aspiration of thoughts and intentions. Gems are often used in jewelry making. We know that they make sense, but what kind of meaning do they carry? In particular, in the Kazakh culture, where gems were especially valued. The most valuable and widely used gemstone is Kazil Akik, a carnelian. It is very popular and widely used. Many Kazakh traditional jewelry pieces have either carnelian or turquoise. These gemstones are found everywhere in Kazakhstan. Carnelian is found in Baikadam, Jambal region, and turquoise comes from Karatau. In Maikayin, Pavlada region, masters often used turquoise or pearls. There were no pearls or corals in our territory, they were brought or exchanged from merchants whose caravans passed along the Silk Road. The most common gemstone in the Kazakh jewelry making was a carnelian. It was extracted from the bottom of lakes and rivers. It did not require much of processing. The gemstones were shaped in the water. They were cut to a certain size and crusted in a jewelry piece. 
which decorations, what kind of jewelry Kazakhs consider as a talisman against the evil spirit. Most of the time, people wore a tumor, an amulet. It was thought that it protects from the evil eye. These tumors could be opened or had a hole where they put a prayer from the Quran or the blessing of a mullah of the grandmothers or grandfathers. Our ancestors believed that Tumar protects not only from the evil eye, but also from any evil spirits. Ancient nomads wore a handful of soil in their amulets called in Kazakh the Tumar. The word Tumar takes its roots from the ancient Turkic language Tumiye, meaning native land in Kazakh. After the spread of Islam on the territory of current Kazakhstan, a piece of paper with a verse from Quran was often hid inside the Tuma. Akseleo Seydimbek, ethnographer. People also wore ikiyak, a product made from owl's claw decorated with silver and stones. Previously it was attached to the headgear, now it is worn on clothing, and people believe that it protects from the evil eye. The Kazakhs greatly honored the owl. For them, this bird was a sacred one. It was treated with a special attention as well as the eagle. The headdress and dombra were decorated with their feathers. In the event of the death of an owl, its claws were used as amulets. It was believed that they protect from the evil eye and evil spirits. Usually they were hung from the besik, the baby's cradle or attached to a child's headdress. Owls inhabited territories throughout Kazakhstan. They are on the verge of extinction now. In 2010, they were listed in the Red Book of Endangered Animals in Kazakhstan. They were called blacksmiths, then the jewelers. I understand that these are two different craftsmen. What is the difference between them? The blacksmith was a craftsman who works with black metal. He made weapons and tools. A jeweler worked with gold and silver. The term zeger, meaning a jeweler, is not only a Kazakh word. The word can be found in the Persian and Arabic languages. That is the difference between a blacksmith and a jeweler. Were there any famous blacksmiths in the Kazakh steppe? Both blacksmiths and jewelers were in demand in the past. They always had enough orders. They were always involved in preparing bridal jewelries for weddings. They still are involved, but of course, much less now. Nowadays, there are very few blacksmiths because there is no longer such a high demand for their products. What they were able to do before now is produced in factories. We had talented blacksmiths. One of them was Dekem by Shokparuli. He passed away, he was a natural talent. In the Soviet times, many museums had his pieces as exhibits, tools, weapons, musical instruments. He could make anything. And today his pieces are still preserved in museums across the Republic. We will interrupt our conversation for just a few minutes. Let's watch a short video footage that we prepared. Beric was fascinated by the art of jewelry making since he was a kid. And it's not surprising since it has been a family craft throughout several generations. In his family, the knowledge of the craft was passed down from fathers to sons. So he grew up learning how to make jewelry from his own father. He sees it as his calling, so now Beric wants to pass down the Kazakh jewelry making traditions to his apprentices. Being a student of such an outstanding master as Beric Ali buys both happiness and pride and great luck. After all, jewelry is not just art, it is a kind of chemistry, it is magic. In order to work with metal, you have to be a chemist. There are a lot of secrets, and my teacher knows them all. I want to be just like him. Beric Alibai is a jeweler with a God-given talent. <laughs> 
Just before the international exhibition Astana Expo 2017, Beric Alibi converted a part of his own house into a museum. Since then, the items made by the master, as well as the exhibits that he had collected for many years, are displayed at the museum that is open for public. The collection contains jewelry, weapons, carpets, household items made from felt. The most ancient exhibits in his museum are the objects of the Bronze Age, stones, axes and tips. So Barry Kaliba is not only a jeweler, but a big antique collector. What is great about Beric Alibi is that he popularizes our national traditional art, the heritage of the Kazakh people, not only in his homeland, but also abroad. His exhibitions are popular abroad. Through them, people from other countries and cultures learn about the Kazakh culture, traditions and history. He is a national treasure. Beric Alibai is a native of Kizilsai village, Merkan district, Jambil region. In his small village, there are about 70 houses and almost every home has a jeweler. There are about 30 of them. Many of them grew up following the footsteps of Beric Alibai, who is a graduate of the Almaty School of Decorative and Applied Arts and the Kazakh National Academy of Arts. Pieces that have come out of the hands of the jeweler have been exhibited at international exhibitions in China, Japan, Russia, Turkey and Germany. Kazakhs had elaborate blacksmithing and jewelry making techniques and traditions. Were we able to preserve the peculiarities pertaining to the Kazakh crafts? Artisans continued this. Do you agree? I consider myself a jeweler of the traditional Kazakh items because my work is not my fantasy. It is a continuation of the work of my ancestors. My duty is to preserve all the subtleties of the craft and pass all this on to my students. After all, each element is important, it has its own meaning. Well, of course, there are exclusive orders asking for a certain design. Of course, then I go to meet the customer and take into account their wishes. But still, I try not to depart from the national traditions. Because you are responsible. Yes. Yes, I'm aware of all the responsibility. I'm a carrier of the national heritage, and I tell all my students that they must remember that we mustn't lose our roots. We have a huge responsibility to pass on the knowledge of every detail, from generation to generation, and to distort the original forms and meanings would be a crime and historical mistake. In the distant 18th, 19th centuries, our ancestors did not even think that at the end of the 20th century their products would become the heritage of an entire nation, that people would admire them and be proud of them. After all, they at that time fulfilled the order of their contemporaries, and they didn't even wonder what would happen next to their items. And we already know that our pieces will later end up either in museums or in the personal collections of art lovers. What is the main feature of the Kazakh jewelry art? What makes it different? I often hold exhibitions abroad. I represent Kazakhstan in all international events on applied arts. There I have a chance to compare them. When you start to compare them with others, the difference is immediately obvious. Our products are different. First of all with scale, but at the same time with elegance. The expression fine jewelry work is very well suited for describing the Kazakh jewelry pieces. The artistic composition of the items is fascinating. In my collection, in addition to my works, there are exhibit items from the 18th and 19th centuries. I do not cease to be surprised by the precision and perfection of their details. They are my muse. I take inspiration at their sight, and I create my works by looking at them.
any regional differences in jewelry making? Yes, of course there are. Kazakh land is very ancient and immense. When I say ancient, I mean its history. And when I talk about its vast expanses, I want to make it clear that it is so wide that the culture of folk applied art developed in the regions in parallel and individually. North, South, West and East, all regions had their own distinctive features. For example, Western Kazakhstan like Mangistau and Daktobe regions are famous for large jewelry pieces, necklaces and wedding rings. While in Kostanai, Torgai region, smaller items are more popular like rings and brooches. In the south, the pieces are encrusted with gemstones, as turquoise, carnelian and pearls. And in the north, the products have some similarities with the Tatar decorations, but still the Kazakh style can be traced. All the regions have preserved their special features. In the past, people always spoke highly of the craftsmen. Why did the Kazakhs treat the blacksmiths so specially? Previously, the forge was called a shop. The blacksmith's workshop was called a shop. It was considered sacred. According to the stories, if a barren woman spent the night there, then soon she would become pregnant. In the ancient records, there is a mention of the fact that you can put your feet on the anvil and you cannot sit on it. These recommendations have reached our days. Even now, before you go into the workshop and start your day, you must pray and ask the spirits of your ancestors for strength and for permission to do this job. In the old days, not everyone could have a forge. Those who had were considered special. This ring is called a ring of a match. Why it is worn on both fingers? This is a special piece of jewelry with a deep meaning. It is worn on two fingers, it is big and closes almost all the rest. It is round-shaped as Shanirak and symbolizes the family hearth. And these are two young people who have united two hearts under one Shanirak. In the Kazakh tradition, there is a custom, a year after the marriage, the mother of the bride gives the mother of the groom, Kudagi Juzik, a matchmaker's ring. It symbolizes not only good relations between them, first of all, it says that the mother of the bride is pleased with her mother-in-law's attitude towards her daughter. Usually this ring is very solid. It was given only a year after? Only after a year. During this period it was already possible to determine how the daughter-in-law was received at the groom's house and if they loved her like their own daughter. The Kazakhs had a special relationship with their daughters. The parents treated their daughters as guests in their home. They were treated with respect and honor. They took care of their daughters, nurtured them as if they were tender like flowers. The well-known wish to the brides were, sink like a stone into the water, soak like the water into the soil. It means that the brides should completely integrate into the groom's family. Well, as for the ring matchmaker, it was given to signal that the mother-in-law has been treating the daughter-in-law well. 
welcoming her in the new family. A woman who wore this ring was regarded highly in the society. They were even more honored than men. So much were women honored with this ring. So it is not just a decoration. Now, tell me about bracelets. Is it true that they retain strength and energy in the body? Belezik, or a bracelet, is the most popular piece of jewelry among the Kazakhs. It was worn not only by women but also by men. It was believed that through the hands and fingers, all the power of the person goes away. So they wore bracelets and rings that keep the energy. Women wore them on two hands, men wore over clothing. Well, something like this. Bracelets were different. For everyday wear and for special occasions. For holidays, they wore large, bright bracelets decorated with stones. Well, on weekdays, they were more light versions and modest bracelets. But all Kazakh women always wore bracelets and rings on their hands. What about the piece of jewelry on your hand? What does it mean? Bracelet. Silver is not just an accessory, it is a symbol of purity. I do not remember how many years I have been wearing this bracelet, but it has been a long time. It is in the style of the era of the golden man. Pieces like this are also in great demand. Kazakhs always gave preference to silver rather than gold. Why? Yes, indeed. Gold is more used as an addition to silver, and gemstones too. You see, it looks very beautiful and complements each other. It is a lot of ornaments with gilding. The yellow color of gold favorably emphasizes silver. How many types of Kazakh jewelry do you know? It's hard to say for sure, and there is a countless number of them. I cannot name the figure. Even one ring has several kinds, not to mention other pieces of jewelry. Okay, how many kinds of rings are there? For example, the bird's beak. For example, a bird's beak ring, a matchmaker's ring, a family ring, a wedding ring, and so on. They also vary in size. They also vary depending on the region where they were made. This is a product that I have in my hands. Is it an ornament? How do people wear it? This product is on the one hand a decoration and on the other it shows that a person who wears it has power. Not everyone wore it. Only those who were in power, khans, sultans, bees and only in a certain place of a chapan. Well, for every day they used to wear such decorations as pins, brooches and similar small items. There was also such a decoration as Tana, a children's brooch. It was usually given by adults when they saw the child for the first time. The baby's parents traditionally called for all their loved ones, sacrificed cattle and organized a feast. 
Unfortunately, this custom has been forgotten. I thank you for your time. This has been a great conversation. All the best to you in your work. Thank you.